Today we're going to be going over the first step of the process, which is dynamic crop. The goal of dynamic crop is to take all of your images and find a common crop that works amongst all of them. So when you get these images out of your stacker, I guess you could call it, I use the Astro Pixel processor, but when you get them out of your stacker, they're most likely gonna have blank space over here. There's gonna be artifacts around the edges from dithering, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to crop them, but you can't just crop them in a vacuum. You can't just crop this one and then crop that one and crop the other. What you gotta do is make sure that they have all the same exact crop. Because when you go to when you go to stack them later, you're definitely gonna need this. They all have to be the same. They all have to have the same position, the same place where all the stars are, the same place where the nebula is. So that's where dynamic crop comes in. It kind of gives you a same the same crop for all of your images. So what we're gonna do is look over some of these images as a first step. And you can see this one obviously is a is a is an outlier. If you look at all the others, they're kind of similar. They're kind of like just a square. They have some kind of space on the outside, but the Ha image is really, really quite an outlier because it was taken two weeks later. And you know, my telescope must have rotated. Something like that happened. Shit happens, right? In this case, we're gonna start with this because it's the outlier. Right, so what we're probably gonna do is crop somewhere all around here, form a square again, and then apply that same exact crop to the rest of our images. So what I'm gonna do is just start here. I'm gonna go to process, geometry, dynamic crop. Okay, so here we go. I am gonna get on my image, I'm just gonna hit this reset button, and then you could see that I've selected this image and I'm gonna start off with a number, say any number. So let's start off with like 5,700 here. I think that might, oop, I'm hitting something wrong here. Um, and you can see like 5,700 isn't exactly the best crop because we're, we're kind of still picking up a lot of empty space over here. So we wanna try another number and that number should be 5,300. Or at least that's what I'm guessing. Oh. And look at this. I mean, this is this is really close. So yeah, I would actually say this is perfect. This is the crop we want. What I'm gonna do from here is drag out an instance of this crop, put it on my PixInsight desktop. And the reason I'm gonna do this is because I'm gonna use this instance to apply to the rest of my images. But for now, what we're gonna do is just apply it to this high image. Okay. Ha image cropped. Now what we wanna do is take this same instance that we just dragged out and start applying it to the other images. Here's your first. Let me move this over. And that's as easy as that. Just drag the instance right on and you have cropped your images all alike. So I think I almost have all of them here, right? So there's the ha, here's the C, here's the O3. Yeah, I think we got it. The next step of our process is dynamic background extraction. We're gonna learn how to get rid of some of this nasty light pollution that you see in this O3 image, kind of here in the corners and everything else along those ends and how to most effectively use dynamic background extraction. So look forward to uh, talking to you then. Bye.